Hello and welcome, it's Bushwhacker here with another Stationaries tutorial. On this episode, we're going to be covering the automated arc furnace. This is an extremely helpful setup for smelting a lot of ores automatically. Uh, one thing you do have to watch out for is that this thing can draw lots of power. So make sure that you have a good system in place before setting this up. Now let's figure out how to build this thing. Okay, let's get started. For this build, we're gonna need the labeler, one logic processor, three logic input outputs. Obviously, we're gonna need an arc furnace, and optional but highly recommended are gonna be some chutes. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab our arc furnace, and we're gonna place it down. Doesn't really matter which way it goes, so we'll place it down like this. So this will be the import side, and this will be the output export side. Uh, next we're gonna grab our logic. We're gonna place them down. Now I want to have all of the logic uh, talking to each other and not really anything else. So we're gonna place all the power on my main power line here. So we need, let's see, I put down a math unary. That is not what we need. Uh, we're gonna place down the logic compare. Uh, we need two logic slot readers, so a slot reader, place down another slot reader, and then we're going to need a logic writer. And we can grab our wire cutters and we'll cut, we'll connect all the power up here. Do that really quick. I like doing it this way so that uh, uh, if you're building more systems, you're not seeing everything all in the same system. And you'll see what I mean later if you haven't done this before. So then we're just going to place a corner here and connect all these up. Now I know that the data side of my arc furnace is right here. So that's what I want to connect all these other data ports to. So we'll connect these up trying to use the least amount of wire as possible. It probably uses less wire if you just connected everything up, but like I said, this way is a little more complicated, especially if you have a lot of systems in your base. Connect that up. So there we go. Now all of our data is kind of in this central loop here, and it's only talking to the arc furnace in each of the components here. So now we need to grab our labeler and we need to start labeling these. You don't necessarily have to, but it can get kind of tricky if you don't. So I just like to label everything. So this is our writer. So I'll just say logic writer and this is for the arc furnace. So we'll say arc. Uh, this is the slot reader and I'll start with the import. So import slot reader import. This is our compare, so this is for the arc furnace. And then this is our slot reader, and this will be the export. Okay, now I can throw this down, and we will need to grab our little uh, screwdriver next. So I never like turning these on until I'm completely done because you can accidentally lock things and turn things in, on and off that you didn't really mean to. So the input for this logic writer will end up being the, well, let's start from the beginning. So what this system is gonna do is it's gonna read, if something is in here, but not out here. So if something's wanting to be imported, but not exported, uh, then turn on the arc furnace. Now you may be asking, why don't you just say, if the import is occupied, just activate it. And uh, that sounds good, but the problem is if uh, things get imported so fast that the arc furnace doesn't see a delay in them being imported. So it'll activate for the first one, but the second one gets in there so fast that it doesn't activate again and the system just shuts down. So what we need to do is activate it when something comes in here, 
deactivate it when something is coming out for that split second and that gives it enough time to then reset and know that something new is in here and activate again. So we'll start with our import. So we want to, uh, our device will be our arc furnace. Our slot will just be that it's occupied. So we wanna see if the slot coming into here is occupied. And so this will be the import slot. There we go. And the variable will be occupied. There we go. And we can go ahead and turn this on. And you can see right now, obviously nothing is in it. So it is not occupied. Uh, we will come over here to our export. So the device will be the arc furnace. The slot will be, this will be the export. And our variable again will be occupied and we can turn this on. So now this is saying, is the import occupied? This one is saying, is the export occupied? So then we want to go to our compare here. So we want to say, is the import greater than the export? So this is just gonna say, yep, there's something in the import, but not in the export. Okay, we'll activate. But then if there is something in the import and export, it will end up shutting down just for a split second. And that gives it, like I said, enough time to reset and smelt your stuff like you want it. So we can turn that on, just double check, import greater than export. Okay, and then finally what we have to do is go to our writer and our uh, input will be the logic comparer. The output will be the arc furnace and the output variable will be activate. There we go. So now the system's working. One thing that you do have to do is turn on the arc furnace. Um, and another thing that we should probably do is power the arc furnace. So let's do that really quick here. I'm gonna put in a little junction here and you will see why later. And we'll connect this up here. It's always important to wire up your stuff, turns out. And a junction, there we go. Okay, so our arc furnace is on. Uh, and this is ready to go. So I can, I got some iron over here and I can just show you how this works. So now we'll throw this in and it will automatically take it and start smelting it. There we go. But obviously you pretty much have to tend to this setup just as much as you would tend uh, to have to press the button. So let's add some shoots to this to really make it more useful. So I like using the windows just so you can see everything moving through here. I'll jump up and there we go. Get all these shoots in place here. And actually for this last one here, I am going to add a bin. So you could just add the inlet, but then you kind of have to throw the stuff in here. It doesn't require power, so that's nice. But I like using the bin. Uh, one of the weaknesses of this system is that it does not like uh, reagent mixture. So if you're trying to hook this directly up to a uh, recycler, it is gonna be very unhappy because the second you put reagent mix into this thing, it really bogs it down and you have to end up uh, breaking one of the shoots really to set the thing free again. So now I have uh, powered up my bin here and let's grab some iron. And we can just throw this in here, throw this in here, throw this in here. I'm also, I'll grab some gold, throw some gold in there. Now, like I said, this thing will use a ton of power and especially when uh, melting things down like gold, it tends to use more. So just be very careful because this can put a giant strain on your system. So let's watch this work for a little bit here. And there we go. And it put a new one in there. So we got our iron out and it's starting to smelt more. And you can sit here and kind of monitor how it's doing by looking at the activate button. 
that will allow you to smelt everything. So it definitely makes things very easy if you just want to go out and mine that you can throw everything in here and it'll automatically smelt it all. Well guys, that's it. That, this is the uh, automated arc furnace. Hopefully it's helpful to you and uh, your base building needs. If you like this video guys, go ahead and give it a like. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave those below. Again, thanks for watching. Hopefully I will see you again next time. Bushwaka out.